Hello kids, it's Lori from Nourish. Uh, I haven't done a video in a while. I think the last one was my food haul from um, Country Life Foods in Pullman, Michigan. So I thought today would be a good day. It is rainy and kind of yucky out there, but we're spoiled. And so what a day for cooking up something warm, comfort foodish. And I had all the ingredients already in my cupboard. What I'm showing you right now are some lentils that are cooking. I first sauteed, I guess if you can saute spices, took a little olive oil and curry powder. I guess I put that away already. Curry powder and salt and blended that till it was bubbly. And then I added a cup of soaked lentils. Now you don't have to soak lentils as long as you would another kind of bean um, or another kind of legume actually because legumes are beans, peas, and lentils. So they're a softer, easier to cook uh, legume and I soaked them in hot water for 15 minutes and then fried them a little in the olive oil and the spices then I added water. The recipe calls for two cups of water, but that's too much. And I want the liquid to be absorbed. So, um, and it's getting, it's getting there. You want the lentils to get soft, not fall apart, but soft, and the water absorbed. I don't want to throw away any of that good curry powder and olive oil water. So I put about a cup and a half of water. I even think I could go with less than that. But I'm cooking that and going to get those nice and soft. In fact, I think I'm going to turn up the heat just a tad. All right, so uh, when these are done, I will be ready to add the remaining ingredients. This is really simple. I've got, I had some little um, potatoes. They aren't red potatoes, but they have a really kind of thin golden skin, and they are golden potatoes. Um, I chopped them into large pieces like this, boiled them for a while till they were just, just soft. You don't want them mushy. And then I cut them up uh, into like nice good bite-sized pieces. I'm also going to take some apple that I had on hand that is still going strong. I'm going to chop that up. We're going to add the potato and the apple with the lentil mixture. And then I'm going to add a little bit of apple cider vinegar. You could use lemon juice. I know that sounds like it wouldn't taste good, but it really does. Uh, the recipe called for onion. I'm not feeling the need for an onion today, but I thought I could add a little bit of onion powder when I'm done, some parsley flakes, maybe some more salt, maybe some pepper. But it's a great little casserole, and because you've got your lentils, potato, you know, you've got a really good protein and balanced carb uh, dish. It's very, very tasty. And it's also good warm and also cold. At least I think it is. So what I'm going to do is stop the video now. I'll post this one separately. I have not figured out a way to merge two recorded videos off of my phone, but I haven't tried really hard either. So I want to learn how to do that. But I'll post this one and then when I'm done, I will post the finished product. I am positive that in the past I've shared this probably on my blog, but it's been a while and it's such a good recipe. Um, let me show you where the recipe came from. I really sort of believe there's no such thing as an original idea. Uh, maybe at some point in history there was, but these days there's so much information out there. Um, I've gotten much braver over the last maybe five years as far as tweaking recipes, um, and maybe brave isn't the word, but um, confident, I guess, is the word. Confident in tweaking recipes, making substitutions, taking out something I don't want, adding in something I do, um, 
the freedom to do that. But a good basic recipe is always good um, to have. This is a book called Simply in Season that I purchased at Better World Books. It's um, edited and published by the Mennonite community. Not the local Mennonite community, but kind of the region. And lots of just whole food, good homemade, solid recipes. Um, some of my favorite recipes have come out of this book. My famous zucchini brownies that are loved far and wide um, came out of this book. And what I do is I just substitute coconut oil for some kind of uh, corn oil or whatever. Uh, in other words, I don't want you to misunderstand. If it called for a vegetable oil like corn oil, I would not put that in because I don't believe that's a healthy oil. And I would substitute with melted coconut oil. And uh, just tweak it up and make it healthy in my sense. So I'm going to uh, resume uh, the cooking of my dish. And then I'll do a little short video later showing you the finished product. And um, we'll no doubt in the next couple of days post the recipe or... or at least tell you where you can find it. I, I'm pretty sure it's on my website under recipes, but I will verify that and then I will give you a link to that so that you can find that yourself and play around with it. It's just a good fall recipe uh, and very nutritious. So I will talk to you soon and in the meantime, do something nourishing for yourself. As always, see you soon. Bye.